Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, I said earlier at the press conference this week, we're all very lucky to be involved in this fight, and I think you will all echo that. We're very lucky to witness what we saw tonight. Um, just an incredible fight between two pound-for-pound -pound greats of the sport. Um, incredible effort from Chantel Cameron and Casey Taylor. They're almost written off in the build-up to this fight by many. Um, just rolled back, I say rolled back the years, but just put on the performance of the career to become a two-division, undisputed world champion. Katie joining us up here with Ross. Over to you guys for questions. Katie, number one for you. Obviously, you've done so much in your career, amateur, professional. Where does that rank? That's all the emotion in the ring. I've not seen that from you before, so where does that rank in your, in your career so far? Um, well, it definitely feels like the greatest night of my career so far. Um, I think it was the longest six months of waiting for this rematch. I think over the last few months, I was just going to bed thinking about this rematch and um, just the pressure over the last few months as well. Everyone writing me off. Um, I can't believe so many people are writing me off, to be honest. And um, I, I was just... This, this win meant, meant so much to me, a two-way undisputed champion uh, in front of my home crowd. Um, definitely uh, such a special eye. You've always been the favourites going into fights, so when people are writing you off, going into this training camp, did that add more fire to, the, to your belly to go in there and obviously get the win over Chantel Cameron? Who's the bigger girl? She has this, she just kind of a little bit of power, so did that give that extra fuel in that fight tonight? Um, I think so. I mean, I think um, coming off a loss, you, you have to obviously, um, I guess, go the extra mile and train over the last few months. We, uh, we, I put our, our body through torture over these last few months of preparation for this rematch. And um, we knew we were going to be well prepared stepping in here. And um, But definitely people writing me off. And, um, I was nearly half offended <laughs> that people were actually writing me off so much. Um, it's great to, pr to, to prove people wrong and um, I'm back on top again. One more for me, sorry Kate, one more for me, obviously. <coughs> Boxing have all seen great trilogies. We've spoken to Nicky Ward and Gatti, mm -hmm. we've spoken to Pereira Morales, mm -hmm. Tyson Fury, Wilder more recently. Mm -hmm. Your trilogy, you said in the ring? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think, uh, <coughs> like I was saying in the ring, I don't think women's boxing has seen a trilogy before. So. Um, uh, one of my favourite fighters is Marco Antonio Barrera, Barrera Morales. It's the, the best trilogy you could ever see. So if we could have that type of a, tr of a trilogy. That would be absolutely uh, iconic for the sport. And um, even better if, if we did get it on, uh, in Crow Park, 80,000 people. That, that's, uh, that's the stadium we've all wanted um, for the homecoming. So that would be absolutely amazing if that happened. Yes. Katie, did it feel a little bit different in the early going this time around? It, it seemed different for us watching. Just you seem more sharp almost and you kind of said afterwards you were a bit flat last night. Mm. just wondering why that one um yeah it obviously didn't i think everybody watching the fight knew i wasn't myself in the last fight and uh, um i definitely felt a lot better going into this fight and uh, i knew it was going to be uh, um a lot different and just stepping into the ring i knew i knew i, uh, I was going to be myself tonight and i knew i was going to be able to pull it off uh box very very smart uh, early on in the fight and um, I think that, that that's what I want women to fight in the end. Is there anything you can tell us now about some of your, the differences in your preparation that you well, obviously, for obvious reasons, weren't willing to divulge before the fight? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's healthier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One more thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe how would you assume the atmosphere out there tonight? Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, uh, the atmosphere is always so special, but. Uh, yeah, tonight was a uh, was a very very special night for myself, and I I just I'm overwhelmed sometimes just thinking of the support that I get. Um, yeah, I can hardly speak at the moment, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And what was different about this training camp compared to the last one, Katie? Um, <coughs> just uh, the preparation was just a lot better, and um, the sparring was a lot better. We actually brought Sandy Ryan in for sparring over the last few weeks, and. Um, she was a, a vital part of my preparation as well. So grateful for Sandy. She came over the last few weeks and uh, helped me out in, the, in preparation for this fight. So um, that was a that was a big help as well. And you know, um, you normally say you don't look back at fights, but did you look back and study Cameron's last? Uh, I watched around ten seconds of the last fight. I said I can't watch it. <laughs> 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 so. Did you intend on doing the trilogy? Yeah, maybe. I mean, look. I think um, firstly, the support of Ireland and, and the gates that we've registered here have 
enabled us to make mega fights and you know start to get to the levels that these great fighters deserve you know and we can do that in Ireland there's not many places that we can do that this is Katie's third successive seven figure sellout gate Madison Square Garden and, and now twice at the three arena and as I said at the shopping centre on Wednesday there's not really you can count on one hand the draws in boxing the size of Katie Taylor you know it's Canelo it's AJ it's Fury and it's Katie Taylor and that, that's like that's it globally so um, really to reach those heights of what they deserve we need to be in Ireland and you know I know that Chantel will feel that you know it didn't go away and things were up again but the reality is if, if we want to reach those levels financially and, and pay fighters what they deserve we need to hit huge gates and Katie Taylor draws huge gates especially in Ireland and, and that's the reality of the situation so you know my first thoughts are uh, if we go in Croke Park which we'll do everything we can to um, Chantel Cameron is the pick for the trilogy and it's really only Chantel Cameron or Amanda Serrano. I, I, you know, they're the two mega fights out there that, that Croke Park warrants. So, you know, if, if those fighters want that opportunity and want those kind of paydays and chance at, at legacy like Katie can deliver, absolutely love to. Katie, what would you prefer, Serrano or the trilogy with uh, Cameron? Uh, I really don't care either, either one, uh, to, to be honest. Um, which one what would you prefer? Would I be yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put me in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You came back to Bray with the gold medal. You came back with the with the with the world belt. Any any uh, plans to come back with the how many is it now? Eight, twelve belts you have? <laughs> the people of Bray love you. Yeah. Will you. Will you visit us? Uh, what's it <laughs> what? oh, the next few days. You want to see you coming home, basically. Yeah. Out to Bray. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm not too sure what the plans are for the next uh, couple of weeks, but I am home for the next few weeks, and um, I'm just looking forward to spending a bit of time to, with my family. Really, it's been a busy few months of preparation for this fight, so I get a chance to relax. So it's uh, it's amazing to be home. Yeah. Okay. Look, Kelly deserves a break. Obviously, look, she's had a, a grueling fight. Um, when do you start making the moves for Crow Park? I know you're, you know, I know the way you think. Is it going to be tomorrow morning? You're going to be up there. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I've got to be like careful. Give me a break, yeah. lads. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to upset anyone in the process. So, you know, maybe Brian, you know, the local, can come in and have these friendly yeah. chats with people yeah. and stuff like that. But I feel like everyone's got to put the pressure on. Yeah. You know, from you know the country to the politicians to the sport. Like, you know, we can make a financial case on the tourism and why an event like this would be a huge success for this country. But we also have to, if they can't also understand the compassionate side of giving this event and this night to their greatest ever athlete, then I don't really know what we're doing. But also, we're not even asking for favours. All we're asking for is for, that, for the costs to be in line with the biggest stadiums in the world where we hold boxing. So we don't want a free stadium. I mean, if they want to give us one, that'd be marvellous, wouldn't it, Katie? Yeah. But, but all we're saying is, could we just make it there or thereabouts of Wembley or Millennium Stadium or Dallas Cowboys? And shouldn't we just try and all work together to deliver? I mean, what a moment that would be. I mean, you see that tonight? Like, you know, and that's only 9,000. And the difference is, which I said before about going to Croke Park, we can make it more accessible to people. We have to hit numbers on a gate. So we have to, we draw up a gate plan. It's expensive tonight. The tickets are expensive, and not everybody can go. You go to the shopping centre. You've got all generations. You know, eight, nine year olds. You've got granddads. You've got, and when you can have thirty euro tickets or cheaper, and ten thousand of them, you're going to get. It's going to be a massive celebration for generations in this country, and that that's the appeal. And I know it would appeal to Katie as well. I know, like at the end of the day, you know, it's great to drive a big gate at the three arena yeah. but if we can drive even if it's a similar gate with with 60 that like the to see those people come out would be a visual moment that this country would, would yeah, never forget yeah. Katie, yeah. Katie just to focus on what you've achieved tonight like uh, tonight in the ring how enjoyable was it to take part in that contest compared to maybe others you've taken part in were you able to have fun in there um well i think uh Every time I step in the ring, you're, you're, you're supposed to enjoy your sport. and um, it's, it's probably hard when you're in the middle of a battle, but um, 
I definitely love that when, when my name has been announced as a winner. That's that's a, the, the most enjoyable part, obviously. Does uh, camera bring out the best in you? Do you think? Uh, I think our styles definitely match uh, very very well. It's it's never going to be um, an easy fight against her. Yeah, we're both going to have to dig dig down deep and. Um, yeah, I think we we definitely gel very well well together. Okay. You just on Crow Park, what would it mean for you to fight there? It would be amazing. Um, Eighty thousand people in our most iconic stadium. That's what that's what we've been uh, looking for really over the last year. It's been amazing to, to fight here in the Tree Arena, but Crow Park will be just absolutely you know iconic. And Ed Sheeran even said he'd sing around. Yeah. Okay. Genuine. Yeah. 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 You talked about with Man Serrano there. This put one for you and Ross. She said that she wants to stay at 12 trees. Where do you sit on that? Would you go to 12 trees with Samantha or Samantha Serrano if possible? Yeah, absolutely. I'd uh, be happy to do 12 trees with Amanda. Um, I think the 12 trees actually suits the boxer more than the fighter, so I'd be very, very happy to uh, to fight 12 trees. Kerry, now you're on the speed of two weights. Which way would you prefer to stay up? Like weight or super lightweight? Um, I'm happy to. to uh, but wherever the, the best fights are really, the biggest fights and uh, the best fights, I could easily could go back down to 135 as well, so, um, yeah, whatever. Sometimes boxers aren't given the credit they deserve, you know, but tomorrow's absolutely phenomenal. How proud are you of yourself? Um, yeah, I'm obviously, it's always... <sighs> Great. And, uh, Just watching you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, how proud. What's that? What's that? How proud are you of yourself? Um, how proud. I know that sometimes like, people struggle. Yeah. 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 No, it's definitely um, an amazing moment for myself, my team, Ross. I'm proud of her. Yeah, we're all proud of her. <laughs> yeah, so Ross, so. How, how was your reaction to the win, or did you? How comfortable were you beforehand? I was very comfortable. I know there's a lot of doubters. I think you were one of them who maybe wrote an article. And so it's, it's great shutting people like that up and just doing what we do. So I wasn't surprised at all. Ross, was this probably the easiest comfort for Katie you've had? Obviously coming off the defeat, obviously the motivation there. So you didn't have more motivation to, to come and back. Which is easy camp? No, nothing. In, in terms of... You didn't have to motivate no. her, obviously she knew she She's always fight. motivated. Katie's beat girls with a torn cap. She's had things that have happened where <coughs> she has to work around. So her motivation never wavers, and she always works hard. She's had some situations in her career where no one knew about it, and she went in there, and she wasn't 100%, and she still busts her ass. So she was healthier, and she was able to train properly, and that's the result. Can you, can you outline the game plan that you gave to Katie for pulling off tonight's victory and how she... It's one round at a time, you know. It's like you can make a game plan, but you got to see what's in front of you, you know. And I know that big part of it was trying to shut down Cameron's jab because when you take her jab away, she can't do a whole lot. You know, she needs to get momentum off the lead hand, and you sit still with her, and she's gonna bang. So early on, I thought we moved really well. We countered her jab and shut it down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So you know, but like I said, it's one round at a time. What you know. were you telling her in the ring? as you were watching her performance? Just depending on what I saw, I guess. You know, it's like you're just kind of commenting on the fight and what you think she needs to do at the moment. So, I mean, it varies round by round. Hey, just quickly, two years ago, it looked like Ireland was never a reality. I'm sure as much as you like London and Wembley Arena, you're much happier to be here. Um, yeah. Now it is a reality. We talk, we didn't even know if we'd be here. Now we're talking about Pro Park potentially shows how much you've come and also boxing's come over here. Real proud special moment. Yeah, amazing. Even the last time, uh, when I was stepping out the last time, um, I was nearly getting emotional, you know, because a couple of years ago, I didn't think this was ever going to happen. And here I was, the first time boxing at home as a pro. But obviously, the result didn't go my way, but just to have a chance to actually box in my own, my own country is, is absolutely, every every fighter wants that. And, um, the, the fight here in a set out stadium is, is the stuff of dreams. It's amazing. Katie, Chantel was telling a story before the fight that she had messaged you on Instagram after the first fight just to say thanks for the opportunity and that you left her on red. So 
would you have a chance to get back to this like <laughs> I don't uh, look even look after my Instagram account for, for the most part so that's <laughs> 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 Hold on a minute. Yeah. But when you replied to me, was that Thomas? Yeah. Oh, right. uh, yeah. that was a bit rude. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, just to think of seven years, like this weekend mm. since Katie made a professional debut, would you have ever thought that you were going to have nights like this? No, I mean, you know, we came, she came into the office with Brian and um, she sent me a lovely, I mean, you all know the story, she sent me a lovely message that I think was written by her brother. You know, she was definitely seen nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and I thought I, I watched her in the you know London 2012. And I thought oh, I'll have the meeting, and I knew Brian was involved, so you know, and it just it was a meeting. And we just got on so well. We went for lunch. I remember the lunch like it was yesterday down at Smiths in Ongar, and we had a lovely bit of fish. And then it was just like when when we went to Wembley Arena for the debut, they were laughing at us. Like even my dad was sort of saying to me. What are you do like what is going on here? What, what, you know, all the old school what, women's boxing. Like, what's going on here? I mean, we don't know. Women don't box, you know. And then from that first performance, everything changed, right? And it just it built and it built and it built. And you know, we have done a great job, but we couldn't have done it without Katie's performances because that was the difference. Every time she fought, fought on every big stage, everyone went wow. And, you know, we sat in that room and we talked, I probably was giving some spiel about, yeah, we'll headline in Ireland and Madison Square Garden, but no one could have imagined what, how the story would play out. You know, and, and actually when they, they said tonight, was it 20, 22 fights, so that was your 23rd fight mm -hmm. tonight, I was actually thinking in the ring, wow, you've had 23 mm -hmm. fights, I can't, you know, we've been everywhere. She's boxed. Millennium Stadium, Wembley Stadium, Philadelphia, Boston, New York, Liverpool, Manchester, London, I mean, everywhere, Ireland especially. So I'm just so pleased we got this chapter. You know, even, even if tonight was the final, you know, part of the story, I would be delighted that we got the opportunity to, to fight twice in Ireland. But as it happens, there's a few more chapters to go yet. And, um, you know, like I said, genuinely been one of the most enjoyable, you know, Kate, as you guys know, Katie, you keep Katie, let Katie to herself. You know, I've got unbelievable respect for her. I don't like to get involved because she does sometimes scare me. And this week particularly, I've just been like, you know, I could see her all week. I mean, you know, and I know that she didn't, you guys didn't get the time that you necessarily wanted, but you also knew why, right? And you, you took it on the chin well and you acknowledged that. You know, I'm really moaned, right? Which, well, to me anyway, thank you. But that's what you, you know. When, when you talk about a true great, you just you hold your hands up. And you say, I wouldn't have even said to her this week, do us a favour, just do a couple more interviews. I was petrified. I mean, I normally I'd say to Brian, I didn't even say anything to Brian. <laughs> Brian just looked at me and went, don't even, you know, go away. And you know, Ross done a great job of pulling her out of situations. That's what a team does. You know, you're down, she wanted to go and see kids and sign autographs, and Ross went, out. And that was a difference tonight, because last time she looked spent. You know, physically she weren't herself, but also it's draining really draining and the team did well to make sure she went in with plenty of energy Ross, what about your, I think it was one minute and 20 seconds ring walk um, that was obviously something you were focusing on getting into the ring quick and not letting the emotions get I just couldn't wait to get into the ring tonight to be honest <laughs> I wasn't thinking about the ring walk I just wanted to get into the ring and, and fight um, like I said it was a long way since the last fight and I was just ready to fight at this stage I just wanted to get the fight on and um, and get the win. Crazy when you hear Eddie talking about your wider legacy, uh, everything you've achieved beyond boxing, how does that make you feel, especially given what you've achieved against him? Um, it's amazing just looking at so many kids there again tonight. Is uh, you know, that's what makes it worthwhile for me, really. Um, I've seen Amy Broadhurst tonight as well, uh, an amazing champion herself, and. Um, having a chance to inspire people like that. If, if I inspire girls like Amy Broadhurst, I think I've done, I've done my job well. I'm happy. She's an amazing champion, and um, yeah, just uh, and I think she's going to be an amazing pro as well. By the way, she's going to be definitely um, one for the future. I can't wait to see her as a pro. She's going to be a world champion without a doubt. Um, so I'm just excited to see her career and the rest of the young girls that are that are coming up as well. It's amazing. And, and Eddie just on Crow Park. <coughs> 
what do you need? You're, you're talking about making it happen, but what, like what, what the barriers that were there before, are they, are they still there, and what do you need? We, we just need it to be in line with every other stadium. So it's just cost? Yeah, I mean, because otherwise we can't deliver what Katie deserves. You know, of course, every athlete, every boxer wants to make money, and Katie's never one that's going to, you know, like she's got a team to push that. But I want to give her what she deserves, you know, and that we're always under pressure. It's all very well saying, oh, she changed the face of the sport, she's broken down barriers. When it's all said and done, you better make sure you get what you deserve while you have done all those things. So we just want to make sure that if she was fighting at Wembley Stadium, she would receive the same purse that she would receive at Croke Park. And I don't, you know, I know like, some people don't like to talk about the money side, I will. Because I have to make sure that she gets absolutely what she deserves. And at the current cost, she just wouldn't. And, and the numbers don't make sense because I have to deliver her the right number because it's my job. And why do you think that'll change? Because how can you not provide that? You know, I mean, you guys have had a pretty rough week, right? Tonight, you look around. I mean, not being funny, when we come to this country, not, not sounding cheesy, the, the welcome that we receive is unbelievable. It's the only place I don't get booed. You know, people stopping me in the car going, Eddie, up Katie Taylor, yes, tonight. We're, like, and that's such a great feeling. So when you saw our, our things that happened this week and then you see tonight and you see people with passion and holding the flag up and supporting one of their own. Like, and again, if we were asking for money, if we were asking for a free stadium, if we were asking for all these things, we're not. We're just saying, let one of your greatest athletes of all time have her night. Also for a night that will drive unbelievable tourism, and financial benefit to the city and the country. More so than a yachting tournament or something else that they'll support. Okay. That's a good enough event, sorry. And I like yachting. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> a few days for the country. I'm sure you saw the scene. Yeah. A few people online now, many messages online are saying that you brought a bit of light to them tonight. What's your message to them? Well, if that's the case, I'm very happy about that. I think it's... I was heartbroken to hear about the the stabbing of a five and six year old kids is absolutely cowardly. I, I can't even <coughs> fathom what those families are going through. So um, yeah, very, very happy to, to be a light in the country at, at, at this moment. And my heart's gone out to those families genuinely. So um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, speaking of events this week, Eddie, I mean, there has been a lot of talk and criticism of your links with uh, Conor McGregor. Yeah, you had to do it, didn't you? <laughs> no, no, I know. No, 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 I have to tell you this. I'm so bored of talking about it. All you ever do is look for a negative, right? Conor McGregor is Conor McGregor. I don't represent him. I don't talk about his comments. He has a brand that has backed the sport of boxing, and he has nothing to do with Katie Taylor, the show, the company. His, his opinions are his opinions. Tonight, we celebrate one of your greatest ever athletes. No more questions about Conor McGregor. Well, I'm not being negative, but I have to ask the question. But then you can ask me well, away from the press conference. No, but you can, ask me, you can ask me after the press conference. I'll answer it. Not in front of Katie Taylor. This is her night, and congratulations to the, one of the greatest athletes I've ever had yeah. to take away.